Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. This is a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. The most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for both prelims and mains examination perspective will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 17th of August. The first news that is understanding the ethanol blending. This is from the text and context page of the Hindu. Second, Army new system that is F Insas Nippon Mines and LAC. This is again from the explain page of the Indian Express. Third is the constructions and food MSME fuel post COVID-19 credit rise. We'll see how these sectors are performing, specifically the construction and the food sector. And the fourth is dip in the cases of child mortality. This is what the health ministry has given data in the parliament. And the last is an editorial high point in science, technology and innovations. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming problems examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before that, if you are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe apt plus academy for civil services on youtube if you like this video if you find this video informative and helpful for your examination do not forget to press a like button so starting with the first news of the day that is understanding the ethanol blending this is relevant for general studies paper 2 under the topic government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementation although this is again relevant for your general studies paper 3 where environmental pollutions, EI and other topics are concerned. So recently, India has achieved a target of 10% of the ethanol blending target. The Prime Minister has categorically noted and announced that India has achieved the target of blending 10% of sugarcane extractions ethanol in petrol. right? And this was done ahead of a schedule. Again, this is an achievement for India. And the Prime Minister has also stressed upon the need that India should be self-sufficient, should be Atmanirbhar in the energy sector. And India is one of the world largest, biggest oil importing nations. Comparatively to other countries, India import the largest oil. Now, ethanol blending kya hai? Kis tarah se kaam karti hai? Ethanol blending with petrol to burn less fossil fuel while running vehicles is called ethanol blending this is the basic definition of ethanol blending now if we talk ethanol ki baat kare, agriculture mein, ethanol in any agriculture byproduct is mainly obtained from the processing of sugar from sugar cane but also from the other sources such as rice husk maize are currently 10 percent of the petrol that power vehicle is ethanol so these are basic uh, points that now, India aimed to increase this ratio by 20%. India has already achieved the 10% target of ethanol blending, but we are looking forward to reach a target of 20% by 2030. But in 2021, Niti Aayog has put out ethanol roadmap that the deadline is going to be achieved by 2025. So five years prior, India is going to achieve the target of 20% of the ethanol blending. Now, how it actually process, if you want to understand the basics, this is how the crop sugar cane, the fermentation process take place. Then again, there is a purification which is involved. Now, ethanol is being treated and then the blending process is done. And finally, the fuel that is being uh, produced is kept in a container and that reach out to the fuel stations. Now, advantages of ethanol blending, ki agar baat kare, ethanol blending will help to bring down our share of the oil import. Actually, we are importing close to 85% from foreign countries abroad, which also call for a lot more spending. Even our foreign exchange reserve is being invested in this. So, the foreign exchange ki currency we will conserve kar paenge, agar indigenously ethanol blending ki process ko speed up. Kiya. The second is that more ethanol output would increase the farm income. Definitely, this is going to help farmers also. Their residual product will also be utilized further. And Niti Aayog's report, ke matabe, your latest report for 2021, says that India's net import for the petroleum was 185 million ton, and that the cost was around 55 billion in 2021, right? And that the successful ethanol blending program can save close to 5 billion per 
n up. So this is the value that we can save up for other important programs by the government of India. Now there are two kinds of ethanol basically. This is again very much relevant for your prelims examination. So the two kinds of ethanol evolved is first is called first generation or it is also called IG and the second is called 2G. Right? So what is the difference? Hai? Just you need to know the difference in this. So first, what is the first generation? So ethanol, mein, jahan pe government procure karti, basically the ethanol products and other sources like beside molasses, ki jo aur products use ki jati hai, that is called first generation. And other than molasses like rice stalks, wheat, corn cobs, corn stalks, biogas, bamboos, and even woody biomass, these are called second generation ethanol sources. So sources per differentiate ki gayi hai. Even government has said, Jo residuals hai, crop residuals, unko bhi utilize kiya jayega as ethanol productions. Now countries ke performance ke agar baat kare, apart from India, which are the countries which are performing well in the ethanol blending? So these are the list of the country which include China, Canada, Brazil, followed by the United States of America. And ethanol blending a program that has been developed by these countries. Among these, Brazil is a standing out country which has performed commendably well. And it has legislated that ethanol content in petrol should be a minimum of 18 to 27% range. And finally, reach out a target of 27% by 2021. This is, I'm talking about Brazil as a country, right? So Brazil has outperformed outperformed here. They have, uh, they have done well in terms of overall targets. Now, what are the alternatives to this? If we talk about some other alternative forms that we can use. So sources, as per the auto industry said, that they prefer to use biofuel only compared to any other options such as electric vehicles, hydrogen power or compressed natural gas. This is CNG, which is being used in many cities across India, specifically Delhi, ki baat kare, to pe CNG mandatory. Ki gayi, right? So these are the other alternative. EV, although EV is something which is very costly. So EV, ki agar baat kare, jo electronic vehicle, hai, uski production is costly, high, aisi wajay se, even not being used. Even for the hydrogen power, for the hydrogen power, this also call for the innovation. So time being, biofuel, mein, khas karke, agar baat ki jay, biofuel is best alternative. Maani gayi. And this is mainly because the biofuel demand at least increment investment for the manufacturers. Now challenges before the industry to reach out with the 20% of the target, although India has successfully achieved the target of 10%, but 20% ki jo target hai, usse achieve karne mein kis ki parishani aa sakti, we'll have to figure it out. So as per the Niti Aayog reports, it pointed out that the challenges before the industry is optimizations of engines for high ethanol, which will be high ethanol ki blending, because the proportions are built in the petrol, so that there are different machines and engines ke hai, that call for durabilities of the studies on the engines and field trial will also be essentially required. Now, the sources of the auto industries are in talk with the government to plan a transition and there are multiple issues of, for the stake with the endeavor. And storing is going to be the main concern. For 10% supply, it has contained tandem. With 20% supply, the storage would have to be separated, which has taken a rise in cost also. Now, the other news, Army New System F, INSAS, Nippon Machine and LCA. This is from the Indian Express Express page. So, something relevant for general studies paper 3, that is achievement of India in science of technology, Indianization of technology and development of new technology. So recently, the Union Defense Minister has handed over the indigenously developed future infantry soldier or known as system in SAS, in SAS right? and Nippon Mines and Landing Craft Assault to the Indian Army. A day after India has basically shown its own Hovinders gun, that is the ATAGS, which was recent May, Independence Day ki ceremony, hui, 21st gun salute to the indigenous EC uh, Indian Hobbits gun se Now about the F INSAS system, how it is actually going to function. So F INSAS stand for Future Infantry Soldiers System. This is again important for you, right? Many a times it can be a question for other competitive examination. So this is a program of modernization aimed at increasing the operational capacity of Indian soldiers. And the project of the soldiers are being implemented with the modern system 
जहाँ पे टाइट वेट ऑल वेदर ट्रेन एंड कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव लो मेंटेनेंस सिस्टम डेवलप की गई है एंड दिस इज फुल विद गियर ऑफ एन सिंसा सिस्टम इंक्लूडिंग द ए के टू जीरो सिक्स ये राइफल है यू मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ ए के फोर्टी सेवन उसकी नंबर्स काफ़ी अपग्रेड हो गई है नाउ इट इज टू जीरो सेवन एट करेंट राइट सो रशिया ऑपरेटेड ये है मैगजीन फील्ड जो कि इंडिया में इंडिजनसली डेवलप की गई है अमेठी के मैन्युफैक्चरिंग हब पे नो एफ इंसास प्रोवाइड सोल्जर्स विद बेलिस्टिक हेलमेट्स बेलिस्टिक गूगल्स एंड इवन स्मॉल प्रोजेक्शन प्रोजेक्टाइल फ्रेगमेंट्स अलॉन्ग विद द बुलेट प्रूफ वेस्ट तो स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट टेक्नोलॉजी यूज करके टेक्नोलॉजी एंड इनोवेशन आर द पार्ट ऑफ द एफ इंसास सिस्टम Now, what is F Insas model upon? किस तरह से ये काम कर रही है How it has actually derived its concept? So this was actually conceived in 2000, right? थाउजेंड ये न्यू कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं है बेसिकली इंडस्ट्रीज के लिए और सारे वर्ल्ड में से यूज़ की जाती है लाइक अदर कंट्रीज इंक्लूड यू एस विच हैज लैंड वॉरियर यू के के पास अपनी फर्स्ट है विच इज फ्यूचर इंटीग्रेटेड सोल्जर्स and according to the estimate over 20 armies around the world are following such programs india is now going to be the league on that now f insas ki agar baat kare f jo f insas hai isme insas aap confuse na ho indian small arms system se jo basically guns use kiye jate hain border force bsf ke dwara wo insas guns use karte hain so now this is a new concept that is called f insas which is different from the insas right so they have the rb infantry soldiers multi national programs hai with aims to optimize the soldier performance and even for the duration of military operations if you want to see the images of insas you can check out in the google you will get the clarity on that now the drdo scientist reveals that the similar infantry modernization program from the us france germany and israel israel was the studies that was conducted on the indian project so हमने कुछ और टेक्नोलॉजीज स्टडी की ये सारे कंट्रीज से ताकि हम एफ इंसास को बना पाए नाउ निपुन माइंस की अगर बात करें निपुन माइंस इज अगेन इंडिजसली डेवलप्ड इट इज एंटी पर्सनल माइंड टर्म्ड एज डीआरडीओ सॉफ्ट टारगेट ब्लास्ट म्यूनिशंस एंड दीज माइंस आर मेंट टू एक्ट फॉर द फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अगेन इन्फ्लेटेशन ऑफ आर्मीज जब अगर इन्फ्लेंट्री खास करके आर्मी के साथ कोई ऐसी प्रॉब्लम्स आती है इन्फ्लेटेशन की बात होती है सो दिस कैन एक्ट एज अ फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस which is being developed by an armed research and development establishment of pune facility located at pune right so drdo uh, ke taraf se development hui and anti personal missile are meant to used the human against the anti tank mines which is aimed for the heavy vehicles and they are smaller in size and can deploy the large numbers and the army said that the mines will provide protections to the troops in the borders and again have a effective anti personal mines in the earth now there's also called lca that is the landing craft assault that is meant to serve the replacement of the boats right jo capacities hain that are currently that is being used in the pont sole basically jo line of actual control hai wahan pe kafi zyada problem bhi dekhi gayi eastern ladakh mein the reason being this lca has been deployed and the lca can be an indirectly developed by the goa based accurate shipyard limited is said to have better launch speed capacity across the border obstacle in the eastern ladakh and similar vessel was already functions with the indian navy so we have upgraded on this part now the other news constructions food msme these two msme sectors has fuel post the covid credit something relevant for general studies paper 3 that is indian economy in issues related to planning mobilization resource growth and development so the micro small and medium enterprises specifically the food and construction sectors are well uh, once again uh, they are overcoming the problem that we have seen during the covid 19 so these two sector on the recovery mode and msme was one of the worst hit sector during the covid 19 pandemic right so lenders to the msme of e-commerce was strong event during the pandemic and retail and food service has picked up back in a year so something some these sectors are performing commendably well they are coming back to their pace now companies with increase in borrowing uh, basically agar baat kare companies they have seen an increase in the borrowing in terms of percentage of total dispersal of food products ki agar baat kare there are some data like the borrowing was around 14% in 2019 20 and now it is 20% so again a uh, increase of 6% can be seen here Now, the same period, the construction material of the industries have seen a upswing demand. Earlier, it was 
4% and now this is 7% again here increase of 3% right. So the MSME sector one of the worst hit sector during the pandemic has seen a loss of businesses and now are on the recovery mode. Now there is a concept which government has come up with that is ECLGS which stands for Emergency Credit Line Guarantee System was unveiled as a comprehensive package which was started by the package in the start ki thi, you know, for the revival of uh, the economy. So in that this was one of the important credit system to aid the MSME sectors in the view of economic distress of the COVID-19 pandemic. And according to the EcoRap report, it was said that 2.36 lakh crore rupees were dispersed for the MSME under the ECLGS schemes. So this is again important if you're writing specifically in mains paper, so you can points highlight the local. Now, dip in the cases of child mortality, something relevant for general studies paper too, that is issues related to development and management of health. So according to the Union Health Ministry, India has taken a rapid stride in reducing the child mortality. Comparison ki gaye from 2014. Earlier, like it was 55 per, now the birth is like 35 per thousand per. So death uh, ki jo mortality rate hai wo pehle se kam. Now there's a national campaign and parenting app which was launched. So recently, Palin thousand national campaign and parenting app was launched by the government of India. And this focuses upon the cognitive development of children in the first two years of their life. So cognitive development, the mental development is very important, right? So the app will provide a practical advice to the caregivers and how they need to maintain their daily routine. What are the things, what are the doubts if they're arising with, they have to clear that doubt. The chatbot is there, which will help them to get their queries solved. So the first 100 days income passes the conceptuals or the conceptions for the first two years of the child life. During this period, child growth, child ki jo nutrition, stimulation, love and support, even emotion development take place. And the first thousand days are established with a solid platform for the child, physical, mental, emotional, cognitive and social. So these are aspects pe dhyan dene ki hai. the first thousand days of children is very important. Now moving to the editorial of the day, high point in science and technology and innovations, something relevant for general studies paper two, that is government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations. So there are some important areas that I'll be discussing with you, which include the priorities of the CSIR, leather industries, ke kya sectors, hai, government ke kya measures, hai, leather research institute, ke mein thoda details mein success in technologies, path to self-reliance and the way forward. So the entire editorial uh, concern about the theme that is science and technology and innovation in India. So after the long colonial rule, India was actually robbed with most of its wealth or self wealth ne jo skill thi, jo economic growth thi, usko bhi, uh, basically before independence, it was completely correct, right? So India has stand off to be a poor country. When we got independence, we are running short of many things where there were no sufficient food for the populations. Even democracy was at the earliest. Industries established. There was no trade and there was no even security that was maintained. So these were some of the daunting situation that India has faced. Now against the backdrop of this, Definitely for an innovation, there were, there's the only body that can be remembered for the history of India as CSIR. The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research ke development ki in 1942. Mein. This was again prior to independence. But again, this is something which has played a substantial role in evolving India's. Right? Now, priorities of CSIR ki agar baat kare, the aims to establish number of national regulatories under its umbrella. Similar to the other organization of CSIR ke starts five of its own laboratories, funding from the government and industry raising through the crowdsourcing. Now in collaborations to that, Sir uh, Dorabji Tata Trust and government of Bombay, government of India has come up with Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, which is also known as TIFR. It's one of the premier institutions and institutions for importance in our country, which has substantially given a lot of technology. 
ना उसके बाद लेदर इंडस्ट्रीज पे आते हैं हाउ दिस द लेदर इंडस्ट्रीज हैज एक्चुअली वॉल ओवर द इंडिपेंडेंस द इंडिया डिड नॉट हैव सफिशेंट इंडस्ट्रीज इन द सेक्टर राइट इवन द इनफॉर्मल वर्कर डिड नॉट हैज अ हाईली अनऑर्गेनाइज वर्क इवन दे डो नॉट पोज अ सफिशेंट स्किल सो अ की मैंडेट ऑफ सी एस आई आर वॉज देर फॉर टू हेल्प डेवलप द इंडस्ट्रीज विच मेक कंटेम्प्रेरी टेक्नोलॉजी अवेलेबल टू द ट्रेनिंग एंड दिस शुड बी द रिक्वेजिट ऑफ मैन पार अर्लियर इट वॉज अ रिक्वेजिट ना प्रीडोमेंटली अगर बात करें सी एस आई की कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन दिस कंटेक्स दे हैव सब्सटैंशली हेल्प एंड एड द लेदर सेक्टर सो लेदर इंडस्ट्रीज ना मेकिंग द प्रोडक्ट फाइनल प्रोडक्ट हैज रिमेन एक्सक्लूसिव एंड एप्शन ऑफ द वेल स्टैब्लिश लेदर इंडस्ट्रीज आर रेलिवेंट इन द टेक्नोलॉजिकल पार्ट द गवर्नमेंट मेजर्स की अगर बात करें लेदर इंडस्ट्रीज हैज बिन एम्प्लॉयड विद ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड पीपल एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ड्यूरिंग इंडिपेंडेंस एंड दैट वॉज द ओनली बेसिकली लो कॉस्ट जॉब दैट वॉज अवेलेबल टू मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल राइट एंड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी गवर्नमेंट टूक डिसीजन टू बैन द एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ रॉ मटीरियल हाइट्स एंड स्किन एंड इम्पोज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट ड्यूटी ऑन द सेमी फर्नस लेदर प्रोडक्ट राइट सो द डिसीजन वॉज मेजर टर्निंग पॉइंट फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द लेदर इंडस्ट्रीज that india was concerned about and 50 years down the line the leather industries has worked with more than 4.5 million people and the percentage of them also include the women and these sector are thriving across the world we are among the top manufacturers and importers and india export sorry we export we are the biggest exporter not importers importers are wrong word so we export this at close to 6 billion dollars so india is considered to be the sector which export most of the leather products now csir central leather research institute banayegi this is the footprint that was developed and this laboratory was established in 1948 and developed the technology for further product development and indianization of the sector and it has routinely trained the next generation manpower in the leather industries 40% of personnel employed in the leather industries have been trained by the csir cli laboratory that is central leather research institute Now, human resource development sector has dominantly, but the part of the innovation and been hallmark for the CSI. Now, success in technologies. If we talk about the green revolution, see that has given a glorifying science, innovation, and technology. Now, during the green revolution, CSI footprint could be seen as a development of agrochemical and mechanical agricultures, and this agriculture was achieved through the Swaraj sector, which was a game changer, which was developed by the CSI. तो उसको सी एम ई आर आई जो मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग रिसर्च डिपार्टमेंट उन्होंने डेवलप किया एंड इट हैज हेल्प एंड इट फर्दर ट्रांसफॉर्म विद अ पंजाब ट्रैक्टर लिमिटेड इन 1970। ना पार्ट टू सेल्फ रिलायंस की अगर बात करें सेल्फ रिलायंस के लिए सी एस आई ने कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स पे काम किया विच इंक्लूड फूड एंड न्यूट्रिशंस एरोस्पेस सेक्टर्स हेल्थ एंड बायोटेक्नोलॉजी इंडिया ट्रेडिशन नॉलेज एंड प्रमोटिंग द क्रॉप इन्हांसिंग फॉर द फार्म इन उसके अलावा अरोमा मिशन गवर्नमेंट ने भी रिसेंटली लॉन्च किया विच इज हेल्पिंग लॉट ऑफ फार्म एंड द बेस्ट पार्ट इज दैट द पिंक रेवोल्यूशन विच वॉज स्टार्टेड इन जम्मू एंड काश्मीर वेयर द लेवेंडर वॉज अ पार्ट ऑफ इट हैज बीन अ सेंटर फॉर अट्रैक्शन नाउ लुकिंग टू द वे फॉरवर्ड द ग्रोइंग इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ इंडियन सोसाइटी टू द साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इनोवेशन हैज लेड फॉर द डेवलपमेंट and challenges for the future remaining is intimidating definitely we need to work upon it and this sector has flourished a lot we have a lot of state of art technology that need to incorporate in such a way that is it actually helping out the crops reducing the dependence on natural resources making all industrial poses circular so that no footprint of the human activity is left out making technology environment friendly providing sufficient opportunities for either living cities or a well in the remain priority for the science and technology chahe aap kisi bhi sher se aate hain chote bade no either for tier 2 tier 3 or any kind of city you need to contribute the innovation part the innovation journey should be a long last right so this is the message that was conveyed in this editorial and india has definitely achieved a journey so far in terms of innovation and technology a lot more has to be done and definitely for this the participation of citizen and the contribution of government is essentially required now moving to the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answer of yesterday questions for first question the correct option is c for second question also the correct option is c today's mcq for practice aapko batana hai new umbrella entities ke bare mein kon kon se entities hote hain so do check out for the second and first statement like only those entities owned by india are the part of it and no foreign investment are allowed so do check out for the correct option 
Second, it is with regards to the electoral bond. All nationalized bank are authorized to encash the bond within 15 days of the date of issuance. And the bonds are remittable at the designated bank account of the registered political parties. So which among the following statement is correct? You have to check it out. And if you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.